guys, welcome back. We're back to work on this guitar today. This is, uh, I think, the fourth video now involving this project, so if you haven't been keeping up with it, feel free to check those out. Today we're going to start on the airbrushing. So again, very quick recap. Uh, the customer, friend of mine, his, uh, his daughter died, unfortunately, um, before her third birthday, and this is a memorial guitar for her. It's going to be an all blue graphic, kind of a portrait type of thing, monochromatic ghost effect portrait. I actually have uh, my reference picture for her right here. Cute girl. Anyway, I'm going to start by putting some transfer tape on this and sketching out basically the outlines that I want to cut uh, for my my reference points and then we'll get into some airbrushing. I'm also going to be putting her name on the pick guard uh, which is over there, that's why I pointed over there. <laughs> I'll show you that after. And her pet name that her dad called her, uh, which was, her name was Emily Grace, sorry, and her pet name was Baby Girl. I'll be putting that probably in this area on the edge of the guitar where he can see it while he's playing lead guitar for his church band. So I'm going to get started on getting that masking set up and we'll come back and do some airbrushing. All the details sketched out on here now. I don't think you can see it from there, but you will. We'll bring it closer. Uh, I shouldn't say all the detail. All the outlines are sketched out. Obviously, when you're doing airbrushing, you're not going to cut out every little bit from the stencil and, and um, fill it in using this stencil, that doesn't make any sense. So the masking really doesn't need to include a bunch of detail. All it needs are the general outlines and the places where things go. Uh, you should be able to freehand airbrush quite a bit of it. Now there are some specific challenges with this paint job that I'm just going to mention in case you're planning something like this. When we're doing a ghost job like this one, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that, it's going to be a ghost effect with a color shifting light blue as the top coat. Um, when you're doing something like that, you need a fairly high contrast image underneath. A lot of the detail gets lost, and you, you have to be careful about that. With a blue, it's not so bad, with a, especially a light blue. With a darker color, it would be more subtle, so you'd need more contrast to compensate for that. In this particular instance, um, there's not a whole lot of contrast in this picture. It's a fairly light skinned individual here. The, Emily's got light skin, she's got light hair, she's wearing a light shirt. There's not a whole lot of contrast there. So there are things that need to be done in order to compensate for that. I could do, well hopefully I could do, a fairly good um, true to form monochromatic portrait of this. But then if I went over it with the ghost image stuff, if I went over it with the other paint, it would all disappear and you wouldn't really see anything. Um, in terms of contrast. So what I'm going to have to do, for example, for her hair, I realize she's got blonde hair, it's going to have to be darker. Uh, it's going to be high contrast. I'm going to put some strong highlights in it to give it that air of being a lighter color, but it's going to be darker than, uh, than the rest of her body, much more so than it is in real life. And sim similar things to that will have to be done in various places where the the difference, the contrast between your highlights and your, your low spots are going to have to be uh, stronger than they usually would. Anyway, that's enough of me yapping about the same stuff. I'm going to move the camera so that you can actually see what I've got here. As always, when you're doing this kind of thing, when you sketch it out, I've already cut it. Uh, use a fresh razor blade. Make sure it's perfectly sharp. It's got to be pretty much brand new. should be brand new. Honestly, if you've been watching any airbrushing tutorials, you'll already know that. Uh, and that will help you even though it seems like it would cut deeper because it's sharper you don't have to push as hard so that's not going to gouge into your surface the way trying to cut this out with a dull blade would. It's very important that you're, you're, you have a light touch and you avoid cutting into the surface. Nobody wants to get their guitar back with a bunch of cut lines in it. So I'm actually done talking now for the time being and uh, let's bring the camera in closer and get started.
guys, so that's the end of our video for today. Now, I know I said that the job was going to be the monochromatic portrait and then the blue over top. Uh, at this point when I'm filming this, the, uh, Patrick already has his guitar and he likes it. He loves it, in fact, I believe. Uh, but what ended up happening is that blue paint job didn't turn out so great. It didn't quite work the way that we wanted it to and there were a couple problems with it. And when all said and done, it looked better the way that you just saw it, with the white and the monochromatic portrait like that. Uh, so I ended up repainting it, and what I did was I repainted it silver, so it would be a little more interesting than just the white, uh, and I did the monochromatic portrait in transparent paint over top of that, so you still got that silver reflection coming through. And uh, the first time around with all the blue and stuff, I, I put the name on the on the edge like I said I was going to, and I'll show you all that in the next video, in fact. Uh, I've just kind of sped up because that's not how the guitar turned out. And then I'm going to get some pictures of how it actually turned out because the footage that I have of that ended up being corrupted and won't work. So, yet another thing going wrong. But we'll show you some pictures of how the guitar actually ended up turning out. Everybody's pretty happy with it. Looks good. Uh, we did some, some freehand filigree work on the edges and the portrait was redone and it looked great again and uh, the hardware pick guard and everything was blue so it provided some nice contrast it had that nice color shifting blue has that nice color shifting blue in fact so really the whole thing ended up turning out pretty awesome I think and uh, I'll, I'll show that to you in the next video which will be the last one of the series so thanks for watching uh, sorry for the confusion there and the lost video footage, but uh, still. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, see you next time.